So for those who have come late, um, so we'll be looking at model number four, model ADS, and uh, we'll be looking at phase modulation and amplitude modulation. So to review the electromagnetic theory, we know the light uh, is an electromagnetic wave or it's an EM wave. Electromagnetic wave. So electromagnetic wave have both electric and magnetic field and both are perpendicular to the direction of propagation. Okay, so the electric field E and the magnetic field H both are perpendicular and also they are perpendicular to the direction of propagation. Okay, and uh, we have seen in electromagnetic theory that the electric field of an EM wave propagating in said direction in the medium with the refractive index e nr or eta r can be expressed as e is equal to a0 e raised to j omega t there's a bracket here minus beta nr set we might not have seen the general equation with the, the refractive index but if the medium has a refractive index then we need to incorporate that in the equation okay this is basically the magnitude of electric field so here if i have notated e with an arrow this is basically the vector and if i have notated without the arrow this is basically the magnitude okay now sorry fine now we know this beta is called as a propagation constant. Sorry, the phase constant. It is given as beta is equal to 2 pi by lambda. It is called as a phase constant. So if the wave is propagating along z equal to 0, okay, then that means whatever phase term is here, it will vanish. Just for information. Next, let's just recap what we have discussed in the last class because that we will use it again. Okay. So what we have discussed in the last class is as follows. The induced change in the refractive index of a material with an applied electromagnetic, electric or magnetic field is called as electro-optic effect. So if the refractive index of a material changes when you apply a potential, when you give a charge or give a magnetic field, it is called as electro-optic effect. The change in refractive index dependent on the polarization of the incident light is called as bioreferences. So when a particularly polarized light is incident on a material and the refractive index of the material changes, this is called as bioreferences. And we have seen a photo in which when the light is incident on the material, the transmitted light, the ones which comes out of the material is divided into two different polarizations or two different rays. So this is called as bioreferences. For a linearly polarized plane wave propagating in the z direction, it will split into two polarized components in x and y directions. The propagation constants are different in x and y directions. Okay, so this is basically the electro-optic effect. We have seen that when a wave traveling in any particular direction, can split into two different components depending on the refractive indexes. And finally, if the incident wave is a linearly polarized wave, the output of the material coming out of the material will be elliptically polarized, mostly because there is something called as the different propagation constants, which is like gamma, like we might have seen in electromagnetic theory. So one component is parallel to the optic axis and it's termed as the ordinary ray and the other is perpendicular to the optic axis and termed as the extraordinary ray. So this we have seen again, um, that we have seen a cube or a material where you have a optical axis, okay? And uh, we have seen that the ray can incident on this material and you can decompose the component of the ray parallel to the axis and perpendicular to the axis, okay? And this is the parallel component will uh, will have one will uh, propagate without many change in the light uh, 
change in the refractive index because it is independent of refractive index. In the perpendicular component, we'll have a change in refractive index with, because of which there is a phase difference. Now, applying electric field creates new optic axis, and the phase retardation between the two rays is either proportional to square of the applied voltage, which is called as the Kerr effect, or proportional to the applied voltage, which is called as the Bockels effect. This is what we have seen in the last class. We are going to say a bit of equations so that we can explain the modulation much more easier. We saw that when the electromagnetic wave moves through the material, there will be change in refractive index. Now, how is the change in refractive index related to the electromagnetic wave? So basically, the electromagnetic wave will have an electric field. Um, or I would say, if the material is given a magnetic electric field, there will be change in refractive index. Now, how is the uh, potential given affects the refractive index? What is the relation between the potential, which is the electric field, and the change in refractive index? The field dependent change, that is change, which depends on the applied field in the refractive index can be expressed by the equation del of 1 by n r square, which is basically means the change in inverse inverse of square of refractive index okay so inverse of the square of refractive index is delta of 1 by n r square is related to the applied field. So this E is actually the applied field, the magnitude of the applied field, with related using two constants, which is called as R and S. So R is the linear electro-optic coefficient, and S is the quadratic electro-optic coefficient. So if R is very large, the corresponding Electro-optic effect is called as the Pockels effect. Okay, because if you see R, R and E, E is linear here. It is not quadratic. So Pockels effect is the effect in which the relation between the change in refractive index and the upper electromagnetic field is linear. And if S is large, that makes a quadratic term dominant, then the corresponding electro-optic is called as Kerr effect. So if S is large, this is small, because of which we can, you see that the S is related with the E as square of E, which is basically for curve effect. Now, if you want to describe Pockel's effect more accurately, then you can write in terms of an equation that is del of 1 by n r square is equal to sigma j equal to 1 to l, 1 to 3, r i j l. So this is the electro-optic coefficient. And E is the electric field applied. Okay. Now we see that R has a suffix R I J. Now what is I and what is J? So J is basically the three axis. So if you are considering Cartesian coordinate system, so J is like X Y Z axis. So along each of the different axes. How is the electric field related to the refractive index? Okay. And I is something new. This corresponds to the index ellipsoid under an upper electromagnetic field. Okay. So this has values from 1 to 6. Now, index ellipsoid describes the birefringence and the two resulting polarizations. The directions of the major and minor axis of the ellipse are the two polarization directions corresponding to ordinary and extraordinary rays. Now, we know that when you have this material, okay, and when let's say a linear polarized light is incident on this material, let's say you have the different optical axis, because of virefringence, whatever ray coming out will be elliptically polarized. 
it, it will be having an elliptical polarization okay now the for an ellipse you have a major axis and a minor axis okay the major axis actually gives you the polarization of the ordinary ray and the minor axis will give you the polarization of extraordinary ray okay and since it is an ellipse you can describe the ellipse in terms of the equation which is basically x square by n r x x square plus y square by n r y square plus z square by n r z square is equal to 1 now remember this although i have drawn it as 2d since the material is 3d the ellipsoid is also 3d okay so this is actually a 3d ellipsoid so you have access in all the three directions and you can represent the equation of this ellipsoid using this okay where nr nry nrz and nrx represents the indices of directions of major axis of the ellipsoid okay so this is just to give an idea of what an index ellipsoid is so basically index ellipsoid gives you the uh, resulting polarization and binary frequencies of ordinary and extraordinary ray so you have three directions and uh, you have all the three combinations to give you the uh, corresponding rij component okay so this is the basics of the or you can say more of like an equations related to our uh, modulation so let's come to the first one which is called as the phase modulation okay so in phase modulation this is the experimental setup so you have this material which in, which is an anisotropic material which shows by refringence etc etc let's say my z direction is in this direction perpendicular to the material you apply the voltage in the z direction okay so voltage is in z direction okay and you see that there is an electric field which is linearly polarized along perpendicular to the direction of propagation okay and you have the x and y axis like this okay the incident light of energy is smaller than than the band gap energy propagates to the crystal in the z direction so you have a light wave incident on the material whose energy is less than the band gap so there is no kind of absorption of uh, the light okay so it will just pass through the material the x axis and y axis are the principal dielectric axis and the wave is incident with its plane of polarization inclined at 45 degree to each of these axes so x axis are the principal dielectric axis which means that it is the axis for the ordinary and the extraordinary ray so x is ordinary and y is or the other way whichever it is now when the wave is incident it is incident such that it is along the z direction and also 45 degree with respect to x and with respect to y okay so it will be propagating in such a way that there is a 45 degree angle the plane of the wave will make a 45 degree angle okay so if the wave is incident at z equal to 0 so let's say the wave is incident at z equal to 0 and it is described by e is equal to a0 e raised to j omega t we have seen that e is equal to a0 e raised to j omega t minus beta n r z okay at z equal to 0 implies you will have e is equal to a0 e raised to j omega t okay so this is the electric field net electric field of that wave fine then the polarized components along the two principal axes are ex equal to ey is equal to a0 e raised to j omega t by root 2 means since it is incident at 45 degree okay so this is your x this is your y and this is your wave this is incident at 45 degree so this is a0 e raised to j omega t 
So if you resolve this component along x and y, so this is a zero a raised to j omega t into cos forty five degree, and this is a zero e raised to j omega t into sine forty five degree. Okay, so that you will get as two components. So a zero e raised to j omega t sine forty five degree or cos forty five degree. You know that the value is a zero e raised to j omega t by root. Okay, so that are the two components along x and y. Now, when the electric field is applied in the set direction, so currently, let's assume that here, whatever we have explained here, you don't have this electric field applied. You are just saying that the wave is incident 45 degrees with respect to x and y, so that linearly polarized electromagnetic wave will become an elliptically polarized electromagnetic wave. Fine. The Pockels effect, when electric field is applied in the set direction. The Pockels effect in the limit of a small refractive index change can be expressed as. So we already know that del of one by n r square is equal to r i j i e z. Okay. Now del of one by n r square is basically the differential of one by n r square. Okay. So you can say d by one by n r square is equal to minus one by n r cube into 2 n r square. Okay, so instead, since we can't have this differential, we have a delta. We will have a delta here. So it is exactly same. Okay, and we also already already know that this is equal to r i j i e z. Okay, this is only in one direction. We are not talking about other directions. Okay, where e z is the upper delta field in the direction. So we are applying the electromagnetic field in the z direction because of which you can see the change in refractive index is related to e z. Now you see this is a differential equation. So you have do two minus two delta n r by n r cube is equal to r i j i e z. Okay. Or I can write delta n r is equal to minus n r cube by two r i j L is it? So delta means basically it's a differential quantity. So if you this is basically a differential equation. So if you solve this differential equation, basically you will get along n r x will be some quantity, basically some a into minus n r cube by two r i j L e z plus b, some quantity like this. Similarly for n r y, n r z, etc., etc. So when you solve for a and b, the final equation that you get is something like this. So n r x will have an initial component. So this is basically the initial value of the refractive index. Okay, and there can be the a component, which is r zero, which is again the initial value. Or the initial value of electro-optic coefficient. Okay, so when you solve this equation, which is this equation, you will get this equation along x, y, and z. Now, along z, that it is along the direction of propagation where there is no electric and magnetic fields present, or it will not affect the. Uh, since this is the optical axis, you will not ha be having a change in. The refractive index because n r i is the index in the set direction where no electric field is applied. Okay. Now, so now the two different refractive indices along the privileged direction, which is x and y, which is the principal axis, or the direction along ordinary or extraordinary rays, cause the two waves to travel with different propagation constants, which are described by This equations. So you have x and y. You have applied a field. Now x and y will have two different refractive indexes because of which the equation of the wave, which has incident on the material, will change because there is a new component of the beta which is coming into picture. Okay. So the beta component, which is two pi by lambda, multiplied by n r x, where n r x is that we have seen here. 
will come and similarly for y direction also you will have nry so thus the field in the z direction creates an index ellipsoid with unequal axis in the x and y direction so when you apply the field in the z direction it creates an index ellipsoid ellipsoid means basically an elliptical polarization with unequal axis in x and y direction now if you look at these two components there's a phase difference right so in a sample of length l the phase difference between the two components is given by delta phi is equal to 2 pi by lambda nrx minus nry into l and we have already seen that nrx minus nry if you subtract these two you will get this and e said can be expressed in terms of v and l or l can be expressed in terms of e said and v okay so using this you have finally attained the phase difference between any two waves phase difference between the components okay so here um here we are saying it like this so you have this material the length of the material is l the wave is incident along z the wave travels a distance of l so what is so basically let's say this is z equal to 0 so when it emerges this is at z equal to l so when it emerges then you will have x and y components which are out of phase and we know the phase difference between these two components okay so when you substitute z equal to l here you will get the ex and ey in at z equal to l okay and when you take the difference of these two components you will get delta phi at z equal to l because that is a phase right so that is how this equation has come and when you substitute nrx minus nry from this equations you will be able to get the corresponding values of the change in the phase shift okay this is how the phase modulation is done so by varying v the delta phi changes that is for ex and ey the difference between the phase will change so by for example let's say you want to transmit a bit pattern okay let's say 101101 okay now let's say my for one value i give a voltage 5 volt and for zero value i give a voltage let's say 1 volt as you so for corresponding to 5 volt there is a delta phi and corresponding to 1 volt there is a delta phi because delta phi is proportional to v if you look at this equation so when you change delta phi the value of ex which has some e raised to j of omega t minus some value let's say this is psi psi 1 and ey is equal to e raised to j of omega t minus psi okay so the value of this psi 1 minus psi 2 will change okay so for the value 1 you have one particular phase difference for the value 0 you have a different particular phase difference okay this is how you do the phase modulation and the setup we have already described in the previous slide now if you look at amplitude modulation amplitude modulation is much more simpler when compared to the phase modulation so if the phase difference between the two components at the output is pi by 2 let's say this is pi by 2 then the linearly polarized input wave is changed to circularly polarized wave at the output because we have seen in the last class that when you have one wave like this okay and when you have the next wave something like this
okay where you see there is a phase difference of pi by 2 okay and so this and th these are two different waves with phase difference of pi by 2 okay now if you have phase difference of pi by 2 then you will have a circularly polarized wave so if you make ex with phi is equal to 0 if you make ey with phi is equal to 90 degree then the combination of these two will give you a circularly polarized wave similarly if the difference is pi okay then you see that one wave will be like this and the other wave will be like this and if you see it from here you see a linearly polarized wave so these are these two only thing is the amplitude of the wave will change okay so this is positive and this is negative there is no other change and this is the amplitude modulation okay so by changing uh, the phase of the wave you will get a different amplitude this is called as amplitude modulation and we will see one setup so this is the amplitude modulation setup so what it has is a vertical polarizer so assume that there is an unpolarized light now when you pass it to a vertical polarizer the output of this will be vertical polarized light and this is passed through the material applied with the voltage the output can be of different polarization and there is a quarter wave plate which changes the angle by pi by 2 and there is a horizontal polarization so output of this is horizontally polarized wave so if you have a vertical polarized wave coming as the input of horizontal polarizer polarizer the output will be zero because there is no horizontal polarizer the polarization if it is an elliptically polarized wave which is coming here the output will be only the horizontal polarized wave okay so let's see so input polarizer launches a wave with vertical polarization so there is a vertical polarization which is coming here an output polarizer oriented at 90 degree is placed in the path of the output beam. so there is an output polarizer which is both of this if the voltage V is adjusted such that when V is equal to zero, the output beam is blocked off. Okay, so this is a vertical polarizer. Now let's say you are not applying any voltage here. So when you are not applying any voltage, um, basically you will have something like an elliptical polarized wave. So this when it comes out, mostly will be having a value zero. Now when you apply v pi that is when you apply the v such that delta phi is equal to pi okay if you look at the previous equation you know delta pi is equal to 2 pi by lambda r i j n r 0 cube v okay now if you put v is equal to this lambda by 2 r i j n r 0 cube then you see that delta phi is equal to pi. Okay. So you, this thing, the material will change the polarization of this vertical polarizer, the output of the vertical polarizer to 180 degree. Basically, it will have something like this. Okay. And the quarter wave plate here will make it rotate again by 90 degree. So it will be horizontal. Now, when, the, when it passes through horizontal polarizer, since the input is horizontal polarized wave, the output will be the same. So, whatever be the input wave, it is transmitted to the output. So, thus the amplitude of the wave can be varied in an on-off fashion. Means, if you are not applying any voltage, the output is zero. If you are applying a voltage such that the material gives a phase shift of pi or polarization of pi then you have the complete wave transmitter okay so basically you have on and off so this is a simple amplitude modulation setup okay so, so amplitude modulation is just a one slide um, we are not going into many too many details of amplitude modulation but uh, the basic of everything is from the field dependent change like how the refractive index is related to 
the field applied and how it is related to the um, the coefficients the electro optic coefficients etc uh, etc et okay fine so we will stop it here and uh, we will continue with our class in the next section next class okay so let me take that lens Thank you.